We're ready? Okay. I'm calling to order the San Benito County Integrated Waste Management Regional Agency Local Task Force on 10.02 on um, June 15th, um, 2023. May, uh, I, may I do the flag salute? What? Would you like to lead it too? I said may I, yes. Yes, please okay. do. <laughs> Thank you. Ready, salute. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. May I have a roll call, please? Uh, Council Member Rick Perez. With bells on. <laughs> Council Member John Freeman. Present. And Board of Supervisor B. Gonzalez. Here. Thank you. Um, I would uh, now moving on to item number two. Uh, uh, no, no. Three. Actually, number three, a certificate of posting. So moved. The local task force meeting agenda was posted on Monday, June 12th at 8.28 a.m. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, m move to approve the minutes of March 30th and the May 11th special meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Item number two, public comment. Anyone in the chambers or on Zoom, you have three minutes. Raise your hand or come up to the, wherever. I don't see the podium. Um, it's over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, come up to the dais and speak. Thank you. The Integrated Waste Management Local Task Force encourages your participation at this meeting and welcomes your comments. Speakers are requested to state their name prior to speaking to the committee. Not more than three minutes may be allotted to each speaker and no more than 20 minutes to each subject, unless otherwise extended or limited by the chair. A speaker's allotted time cannot be deferred to another speaker. Committee members may question the speaker, but there will be no, no debate, debate or decision. decision. Pursuant, Pursuant to, to government, government code, code section 54954.2, no action or discussion shall be undertaken on any item not appearing on the posted agenda. If appropriate, the chair or any committee member may direct that a matter be referred to the integrated waste management staff for review. If you are participating on Zoom, select the participants tab and click the raise hand icon. If you are using a phone, press star nine to raise your hand. When your turn arrives, you will hear that you have been unmuted. At this time, state your first name, last name, and county you reside in for the record. Do we have any public comment? All right, no public comment. Thank you. Moving on to item three, staff announcements. Good morning, local task force. I would like to invite up Monica Bonse, our recycling coordinator for today's staff announcements. Uh, is there any way to get the presentation on the screen? Please stand by while we have worked through our technical issues. I'll, I'll just go ahead and start. Um, so for some general updates, we now have an a litter abatement and illegally dumping personnel, our, recycling, our newest recycling coordinator, Frankie Sanchez. Uh, he started April 2023 and has really hit the ground running with all of his work. Uh, he'll be sharing a little bit more about what he's been doing in a little bit. Um, we also recently hired an intern, 
Uh, her name is Lori Tankersley, and she couldn't be here this morning, but she's been a great help with all of our outreach. Uh, and we look further to developing all her trainings and having her help us out with more IWM programs. Um, so we've, sorry, give me one second. This is the one. <laughs> we apologize. If we can just take a, a short break while we get the correct presentation up. Please stand by. I think there's only one on the USB drive. Yesterday was Flag Day, and I just want to thank the staff for you all being out there, not only at the flag um, raising ceremony, but also at Kids in the Park, and then um, the Farmer's Market, and just like the Elections Office, I saw this department out there all day yesterday, so thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and Frankie, mm -hmm. I cannot wait for your program to be announced at our next Board of Supervisors meeting. I'm so excited. I had mentioned to one of the staff members that I saw some refuse on the side of the road, garbage that had been thrown there, and I was told to go take a picture of it, send it to them, and they would take care of it. And um, before I got a chance to even take a picture, I just gave a description, and they were on it. They took care of it, and so that's why I gave the shout out yesterday at the Board of Supervisors meeting, is that you guys were on it so quick, and um, I can't wait until the public starts being able to utilize Frankie and calling whatever line they're gonna call because I'm gonna broadcast it, let me tell you. Um, I know some supervisors um, have been complaining about garbage being dumped illegally on the side of the road, and so I love that you guys are, are approaching it and really getting a, a grip uh, on that problem, so thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you, and I have an announcement. Um, last night at AMBAG, we went through uh, something called PPP, which stands for Public Participation Plan. You can see it's rather thick, but I'm <coughs> starting it now. And what it is is we're trying to engage the public in, in who we are and what we do because we're kind of the unknown organization in the Tri-County area. <coughs> so the important thing that really happened last night was that the executive director announced that the PUC, which is Public Utilities Commission, on, on uh, June, I forget the exact date, June 7th or 8th, something like that, uh, gave, it, gave an okay for the Rural REN Network, which is um, um, an energy saving and, and, and electrification promotion agency that AMBAG will be part of or is part of, they got a $84 million funding and that's for several counties, that's for our Tri-County area, also Fre the Central Valley, Fresno, Mod you know, Modesto, the, those places. 
the Bay Area has their own RAN and their own funding, and so does Los Angeles. Um, and so what this RAN is going to do is it's going to provide uh, funding for both people and organizations uh, to electrify their, their homes, their cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's going to provide grants and, and uh, other opportunities. Uh, so it, it's, it's really, really critical. Uh, the REN is, is, since the Public Utilities Commission just approved, well, what they really approved was the budget, <laughs> you know, the money. Um, it, it's gonna. It won't really be get going until next year, January one. But th but that but that's 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 cr that's critical. Twenty twenty four. But that's it's it's critical. And the other thing we did last night at uh, AMBAG was something called REAP two point which is uh, REAP stands for Regional Early. Oh, I forget what the A stands for. Planning something or other. Anyway, too many acronyms in government sometimes. <laughs> right, but but. REAP is for planning grants, so I wish Ms. Goodspeed was here so I could talk to her about this. But there's all kinds of, of money available for the affordable issues, affordable housing programs, planning activities that lead to increased residential mixed-use capacity, program-level environmental clearance with uh, infill projects uh, with uh, vehicle mile reduction, upgrading infrastructure. This is important because Hollister needs their sewer plant upgraded. We need our sewer line to Hollister. Upgrading infrastructure for sewer, water, and utilities that may uh, serve affordable infill housing. Mo housing mobility strategies, uh, <coughs> building walkable communities at scale, enhancing pedestrian, bicycling, and safety measures, multimodal systems, traffic, pedestrians, and transit. So th th those, are, those are all the items that planning money is available for. So thank you, and that concludes my little member announcement. Okay, it seems like we're still having trouble with the PowerPoint, but I'll just continue on with the updates. Um, so we're still doing kitchen food scrap pail uh, promotion and distribution. We also now have compostable liners, so hopefully this will encourage our residents to participate in the program. Uh, we're giving out around a sample of five, so it's just, you know, just to try it out, and then if they like it, then they can continue to purchase it on their own. And just as a reminder, these are funded through our SB 1383 local assistance grant. Uh, we've also been handing out LED lights. Uh, this is to promote uh, LED light bulbs instead of using fluorescent bulbs. Uh, this is an effort through our HD37 grant. Uh, so each household is eligible for two free light bulbs. Um, so we've, we've handed them out at a couple events at our Earth Day event and our Recycle Day event, and we will be having upcoming events where residents will have the opportunity to pick up their free light bulbs. As for events we had in quarter two, we had quite a few events. We like to stay busy. Uh, we had our annual Earth Day celebration, April 22nd. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you were in attendance. It was a great event, our biggest Earth Day yet. We had over 30 booths, uh, performances, and I think over 600 people in attendance. It was a great event overall. Uh, we were able to recognize all of the annual Recology Art Poster winners, as well as the two businesses who successfully completed, completed the California Green Business Earth Day Challenge, and we're already looking forward to planning next year's event. We've also been doing used motor oil recycling and outreach, as well as DIY giveaways. We were at the Farmer's Market on May 3rd uh, in partnership with Riders Recycle, who helps us with all of our oil outreach. Our intern, Lori Tankersy, was also out there handing out information. We also did outreach on June 3rd outside of O'Reilly's. This was on a Saturday morning, and it gave us the opportunity to talk to folks who uh, were visiting O'Reilly's, dropping off their oil, and just give them more information, as well as you know the DIY giveaway kits. Um, we also had our Recycle Day on May 20th. This was an opportunity for residents to drop off household batteries, fluorescent lights, and e-waste. This was on May 20th at Bergantino Park, sorry. Uh, and we also handed out our, our LED light bulbs there as well. And then on May 24th, we held a free composting class in partnership with a couple master composters. Uh, this was a very well attended event with around 40 people in attendance. Uh, there were around 40 people in attendance, and we were able to offer free compost bins to the people who were there. 
Uh, we will be having future composting classes if you missed that one and would like to attend future lessons. Uh, and then just yesterday, as uh, Supervisor Gonzalez mentioned, we were at Kids at the Park. We were teaching kids about composting and kids had the opportunity to make their own composting hero. And then for upcoming events, we have quite a few upcoming events as well. Uh, uh, this Saturday, actually, we will be having another composting class downtown at the Epicenter. It's going to be split into two sessions. We have a 9.30 session that's going to be all about vermicomposting. Then at 11 a.m., we're going to be teaching people how to build their own compost bin. Um, let me pull up the slideshow because I have the rest of the events on there. Okay, sorry about that. So then on Saturday, this Saturday, we will also be having our monthly HHW event at the landfill. Uh, at this event, we will have Lori and Frankie handing out LED light bulbs as well. Uh, so if you have a chance to go, go ahead and pick up your two free light bulbs there. And then on Wednesday, June 21st, as I mentioned earlier, we will also be uh, distributing the food scrap pails there. Uh, that's gonna be next Saturday, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the farmer's market. Then on Saturday and Sunday, June 24th and 25th, we will be having our second quarterly <laughs> free bulky <laughs> item collection event. This is going to be at the John Smith Road Landfill, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And residents have the opportunity to drop off two free bulky items. Then on Saturday, July 15th, we will be doing a third outreach event for oil and uh, DIY giveaways. This is going to be at the down Downtown Street Car Show and Festival. Uh, that's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That day we also have a monthly HHW event. And on Wednesday, July 19th, mark your calendars because that is going to be the Green Business Mixer. So we will be recognizing all businesses that have been certified since the previous mixer in January. This one is going to be in Hollister at the Veterans Memorial Building. And uh, just like all of our other events, it's going to be 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Oh, it looks like we have our slideshow. Nice. Okay. Then lastly, we have a third composting workshop Saturday, July 29th. And just like the one this Saturday, it's going to be split into two sessions. So at 9.30, we will have Composting 101. Then at 11 a.m., we will do Lasagna Composting Fundamentals. And uh, don't worry, I will be sending emails for all of our events, so you can mark, go ahead and mark your calendars. And that completes my updates, uh, and now I'm going to pass it on to Frankie. I'm just going to say a few words before I hand it off to Frankie, um, who, as Monica said, has just hit the ground running. Um, I think his second week here, we sent him off to a training. Uh, it's the third annual legal dumping conference in um, Alameda County, and I think he learned a lot. He'll get to share a little bit more about that. Uh, but a lot of other training underway. He's meeting with the code enforcement of the county, um, soon to be for the both cities, um, sheriff department, police department, really getting a full grasp and understanding of, of what illegal dumping looks like in San Benito County. And we have him hands on at uh, the San Benito Riverbed cleanup, which is being conducted with um, between HSSA, County HSSA, IWM, uh, the sheriff department, and working with some of the private property owners um, in the riverbed. Uh, then we um, are, have been working with R3 for the past year and a half on a legal dumping program survey. So we um, had R3 go out and survey various cities and counties in California to get information on what do their programs look like, how are they handling litter illegal dumping, what cost are they, um, budget are they putting towards these programs, how are they using cameras, other tools um, to to support those efforts. And so uh, we wanted to wait to finalize that report to once we were able to hire on Frankie's um, position. And so we will be looking to finalize that report and the final is underway. And then of course, as Supervisor Gonzalez mentioned, we have the presentation to the Board of Supervisors on June 27th. And we encourage all of our city partners um, and, and county partners to attend that event uh, or presentation so um, they can see what we've been doing and what what we plan to do with the direction of the board in this LTF, um, one of the hopes is to build a illegal dumping and task force committee 
that similar to Monterey's task force um, or other counties and cities have, have task forces such as this, uh, but working with various stakeholders to really um, work together in solving illegal dumping and litter. So I'm gonna pass it off to Frankie, who's gonna share a little more. Oh, may I suggest um, that when you present to the Board of Supervisors, not only when you give your overview of what you've already done, but maybe a handout with all the future dates on it, um, so that that way there's a hard copy and we can take it, share it, and so forth. Um, I just got online right now to look, and I had to go to RMA to find you, um, but I don't see like a calendar that shows a list. I see all your events listed separately, but um, just to make it easier, yeah. And, I, and I'll make sure I share them, okay? All right, thank you. Good morning, my name's Frank Sanchez. I'm the uh, re resource no, Recycling and Resource Recovery Coordinator who's focused on illegal dumping. It's a tongue twister and a half, and I'm still trying to learn how to say it. Um, thank you, Selena, for the introduction, though. As she mentioned, my second week on the job, I was sent to Alameda County to the Illegal Dumping Conference um, to learn about directly from successful illegal dumping campaigns all throughout the state, and it was really awesome not to only get the chance to learn directly from those people, but to make those connections in-house and then now currently it's my job to go connect with them to learn a little bit more about the details of all their programs and how they work and who they work with um, and so since the illegal dumping conference i've been researching and studying our current programs as they are in the two cities and the county um, looking at different code of ordinances, different penalties, et cetera, as they pertain to illegal dumping, just to kind of get a better grasp of how the three jurisdictions work in pertaining to illegal dumping currently. Um, another thing I've been working on is learning about what different, what roles different departments have when dealing with dumping reports in their respective jurisdictions. So I've been meeting with different enforcement agencies in the county and the two cities to see when illegal dumping comes across their desk, how they go about handling it, what departments they reach out to to eradicate the problem or enforce any citations that go along with it. Um, and I've been learning a lot from our code enforce, our county code enforcement. I still have to reach out to Hollister Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, and San Juan Code to see kind of how they work with illegal dumping. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of them because every time I meet with someone, I learn 20 new things. So it's very informational meeting with everybody. I'm also meeting with other jurisdictions that we learned directly from at uh, the Illegal Dumping Conference. Um, so San Jose has a Beautify SJ program that's a very coercive and all-encompassing illegal dumping program that brings all these agencies together to work coercively to address illegal dumping in San Jose. And so it's a really big problem there because it's a much bigger city than we have here, but they have an awesome program over there. And I look forward to meeting with them and making that connection to see maybe if we can implement some of the programs in, in Hollister or San Benito County and San Juan as well. Um, and lastly, as Selena mentioned, I will be presenting at the Board of Supervisors meeting this later this month to speak more in depth about current county code and in the two cities and then um, also speaking on the, the penalties in regards to violations of illegal dumping. Um, and then also talking a little bit about the task force and where we're headed with that and speaking a little bit about cameras as well to maybe help with enforcement in the county and the two cities. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about that, I'll be doing that at the 27th meeting at the Board of Supervisors. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? No, but I love your energy. <laughs> thank so you. So just <laughs> keep I'm it up. I'm a little nervous. I don't know if you can No, tell. don't worry. It, it didn't come off at all. You just, I love your energy. It's just very powerful, and you just feel that you that you are enjoying what you're doing. So keep it up. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to just add uh, the same that was Vee just said, and uh, I'm really glad that uh, the organization sent you to that Alameda conference. I think networking uh, and lear learning from other similar organizations and your your peers basically is, is is the best way to do it you know totally yeah agree 100 percent yeah i love your energy that's great the um it's hit the ground running i think it, it's that's that's awesome don't what i was wondering and i don't know if it's part of this but one of my concerns with the with our community is human and dog waste 
I know that there is companies that, that are available to come and address that issue. Um, and um, so I just may be throwing it out there for some feedback later on or something to, you know, it's people don't always pick up after their dogs. And yeah. it's when you're walking down our, our public streets and someone's, you can tell someone's been dragging their dog, you know, it's like not cool. Yeah. So I'd like to make sure that, um, like I said, I don't know if it's part of this or if I'm gonna go to the city or county to see if we can get a combined effort to make sure that um, we keep our streets clean. Yeah, it, perhaps the local task force could recommend a future agenda item, maybe um, at the next LCF meeting, and we could kind of do an overview of the existing programs, and then we could receive feedback on um, maybe areas for improvement that the city and the county would like, and those would be things that Frankie would then take to a future local task force to see how these entities could all work together. Great. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. Let's put it on the agenda for the next meeting. This is what I love about this meeting and this group. You guys are proactive, and so thank you. It's not like we have to push you to do something in a direction. You're already thinking of it, so I thank you for that. Thank you. Well, we do talk a lot of trash here. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer recycling. <laughs> okay. That concludes our announcements. Thank you. Uh, we'll go on next to presentations. Um, Recology is up first. Good morning, members of the local task force and IWM staff, good to be here. Um, and I have a presentation as well, hoping that can be pulled up shortly. It's, it's oh, I have, to, I have to yeah. do something? <laughs> 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 All right, well, DIY here at Miller Heights, no problem. Um, so yeah, I wanted to present on um, the highlights from quarter one. Um, we're already well into quarter two, but um, this will be just about quarter one and we'll be working on our second quarter report soon. Um, and moving on here, sorry. I wish I used the arrows. Dang it. Oh, okay, there we go. So this is uh, the current team of Waste Zero Specialists and myself here. Um, on the left is Brian Ferguson. Uh, then we have Gabby Uloa, and then on the right is Lisa Jensima. Um, and the four of us are out in the field every week, if not every day, doing outreach, especially to businesses about organics. We created our own team vision, which is to lead San Benito County towards sustainability through strategic behavior change and partnership. And every week we recite that, um, that vision statement. All right, and uh, in terms of residential highlights, uh, we donated six debris boxes for the Lover's Lane um, flood victims, so that helped with cleanup, we hope, a good deal. Um, that also included staff um, to collect uh, that material and trucks and so forth. Um, we increased AB 1826 compliance in multifamily dwellings countywide from 13.6% in quarter one uh, of 2022 to almost 30% in 2023, yeah. Um, and in terms of commercial highlights, we've done, we did 76 site visits, uh, 20 meetings with customers, 51 waste assessments, 18 new starts, uh, and that means people starting organics who hadn't had it before, or increases to organics, where we're uh, probably also reducing their trash uh, container size and or frequency of collection. So that's all heading in the, a good direction. Um, we're continuing to promote and facilitate early compliance with SB 1383. As you know, San Benito County is currently exempt, but won't be for long. And so um, a lot of our customers, most of our customers now are getting on board really um, fairly easily. Um, there, I think there's momentum in the community. It's becoming the norm. And so uh, we're really 
happy about that. Other highlights, um, oh, just recently, and, and Frankie touched on this already, we, denoted, we donated debris boxes for the river cleanup and for removal of over 150 tires. And they were um, especially tricky, heavy tires because they were full of mud. So they have to be cleaned before they can be displayed. Uh, we've done a lot of work recently, and it's almost hard to call it work because it's a lot of fun to do outreach to the youth. This is through schools, but also through the library, clubs, uh, any way we can reach youth in San Benito County. So we broke another record. I, I should say the kids broke yet another record this year of 276 submissions to our poster contest. So it was challenging, to say the least, to go through all of these great works of art and creativity by our youth. The theme this year was composting changes everything. And uh, we did workshops in the schools as well, along with El Teatro Campesino to help, um, help kids uh, come up with some ideas and work on their posters right there in the classroom. So I think that helped us get more, um, more submissions. Some of them were able to turn them in right away and then others finished at home. So of those, we narrowed it down to 15 after much deliberation um, with a committee, including the county's integrated waste department, um, the arts council, the WRASBC, is that right? Water. The Water Resources uh, Association and, um, and ourselves. So um, it was a, a fun but challenging um, activity. So now those posters are gonna go up on our, our uh, trucks. Yeah, coming up soon. We're hoping for, it'll probably be mid-July. Um, and we'll continue to also uh, post our, post um, the county's billboards on our trucks on the other side. So it'll have the kids art on one side and the county's messages about House of Hazardous Waste and about batteries and so forth on the other side. We've done um, about 20 or sponsored 20 edutainment assemblies. Um, so that was mostly with Eco Hero, also um, El Teatro Campesino, and El Teatro Campesino also um, presented their bag monster character and we showed the <laughs> Lasta Basura um, video. So um, we're hoping to continue to roll out uh, that different versions of that um, show maybe in the coming year. Um, in general, we've been uh, all, you know, keeping up as much as we can. Um, we always respond within 24 hours to any referrals from our customer service representatives. Usually it's within minutes. Um, and so these are, are cases where a customer may, especially commercial customers, will want to increase their garbage and decrease their recycling or organics. So whenever we hear that, we're trying to steer them the other way and get them to, um, to try to recycle or compost more instead. Um, we're doing ongoing behavior change trainings with the Waste Zero team, so that's something I do ongoing um, and always bringing to them the latest uh, science in, in behavior change, what works and what doesn't. So we're always improving with that. And um, we're also doing, uh, uh, making a really concerted effort to have continual improvement between our different departments, so operations, dispatch, customer service, and then our Waste Zero team um, to be sure that there's a, a really uh, consistent and thorough feedback loop. So just this morning, I was out there at 5 a.m. doing a driver's training, and this is the third um, one that we did in the last couple of weeks. So we're really trying to increase the number of um, uh, educational opportunities that, that they help us with, which involves tagging the carts. And although nobody likes to get a tag on their cart, it does help inform the customers that something was wrong with their load and they need to correct it. And then whenever we get back a stub uh, from the drivers, then we follow up with the customers. So part of what we were working on this morning was making sure they return those stubs to us. So that's an ongoing um, activity for us. Looking forward into the new year, um, the new theme will be illegal dumping and litter. <laughs> and um, we're also going to really be promoting as kind of a sub theme to please put your recyclables in your carts loose, not in bags. Yeah. 
especially dark bags where you can't see what's in them. Technically, they can use clear bags, but we'd rather avoid even that. Um, and s along those same lines, we really don't want to see any film plastics in the recycling or organics. It is supposed to go into the garbage instead. So film plastics are things like the wrappers around water bottles or toilet paper, things like that, or um, saran wrap. Um, among our residential customers, we're going to be promoting special programs, in particular including mattress drop-off at John Smith Road Landfill and bulky item collection, which goes hand in hand with trying to decrease illegal dumping. We'll, as I said, continue our non-collection tagging improvements. We're going to be doing some positive tagging, which makes me really happy. So waste zero, the waste zero team, rather than the drivers, will be going out and putting tags on um, the carts of customers who are recycling right. So that'll be fun. And um, we'll continue to do social media, um, especially about common contaminants and um, trying to move people upstream from recycling to reuse and even waste prevention, especially um, that's something we wanna work on with our commercial customers. And moving on to commercial, we, um, are still continuing to focus on our larger quantity generators just to um, capture as much material as possible, prevent it from going to landfill, and capture those diversion opportunities. And we also try to really notice when there's a business that seems especially open to our outreach cooperative, we really wanna support that and get them going because of course the return on investment is, is much better if we, if we can focus on that. Um, and then we also are helping to promote the county's green business certification program and we do the part of the certification that has to do with waste, of course. There's also a new training video, which you may have heard about. Um, it's still in the final, final editing stage, but um, we'll be able to use that soon and we're looking forward to rolling that out uh, to help train our commercial customers in particular. And with the regional agencies, this is really good news. As of yesterday, I found out that of all the regional agency facilities where organics is applicable or organics collection is applicable, it's now being done. So we can say all regional agency facilities are now um, composting or collecting organics and sending it to our compost facilities. So congratulations to all of you for all of those efforts, and that includes you know, police and fire, city and county departments, um, just about anybody you can think of. So that's really great news. Um, and a landing page, you know, I really don't know what this item is, <laughs> to be honest, um, but um, I think we must have a new landing page on our website. I'm gonna have to look into that. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. And. Um, and then we have been working all year with um, Integrated Waste and the cities to create a zero waste event planning packet, especially with San Juan Bautista. So thank you to our especially s assistant city manager, Brian Fouch, for heading that up. So that's already helping with diversion at events. Um, I'm sorry, I was gonna ask a question. Sure. Uh, to go back one slide. Sure. Um, in terms of your residential, um, similar question that I had asked um, Selena, that maybe if you can have some sort of hard copy flyer that we can go ahead and disseminate um, regarding the residential. Um, I know that there's people in the community that don't realize we can arrange uh, um, a mattress pickup or a heavy item like for the elderly or whatever. Um, we just incidentally found that out. My mom's elderly and we, you know, so oh, you guys caught, said, put it on the side of the road column and you guys came and got it where individuals who may not have a truck and be able to take it to wherever they need to take it. And so things like that we want to be able to promote. Yes. And so if you can get us some sort of hard copy sure. document to the supervisors as well in addition to yours, because uh, they really need to sell all of this. If we're going to do recycling right, we all need to be in it together. Absolutely. But some of us don't know the services that are out there. Sure, and yeah. we can't utilize what we don't aren't aware of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're putting it in our newsletter almost every issue, but um, not everybody gets the newsletter or reads the newsletter, so um, we can find new ways to promote that for sure and get you hard copies so you can promote them you okay. know, through your channels for sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and also I would say um, to go onto the website as well, you can help us by uh, letting people know that that information is on our website. That is it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got
Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to go to questions now before sure. four. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Rick. Roll out again. So we're going to put the winners on the, the trucks. Yes. Oh, did you say when? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're just now working on the artwork, so we, we're, you know, replacing the last year's artwork and names and everything on the, it, you know, digitally, and then it will be sent to, a, it's actually a local um, promotions company, and they will oversee the production. I don't know if the production actually happens here, but probably not, and then the signs will go up, I'm hoping, in mid-July. So, you know, it'd be neat, it's, I don't know if this is possible to do like a rollout, you know, for maybe all of us to be part of that with, oh, yeah. with the um, students. That would be great. Because uh, thinking about how you to get people involved with rec uh, recycling and recology and reusing stuff. Yeah, yeah, they other were things. all featured at Earth Day mm -hmm. and they got their prizes and everything and then they posed in front of one of last year's trucks, you know, the, the truck with last year's artwork, but yeah, it would soon have the new artwork. Also, last year uh, we offered the huge billboard sized posters to any kids or families who wanted them from the previous year. So oh I, I think we had eight take them. I can't kind of imagine so you where they put them. But <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, were we re reused. That's reusing. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And the other thing I wanted to say is edutainment. Edutainment. Edutainment, right. Oh my God, that is pure. I love that word. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Dumb. It says, says it all. Yeah. And then you were talking about film, film removal because I, I recycle and I go, go dump off, drop off, and someone was cutting off the film ah. of the plastic oh. so that it could be recycled. Yeah. Is that something everybody can do? I mean. Can you give me an example of what so type of material, like an envelope or something? Or No, it was oh. a plastic bottle plastic with the bottle. film on it. Oh. And they cut it off so oh, that I it could be. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, you don't have to do that. That's that's a. But well they say they won't take it unless the film's cut off. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, maybe at a, a California RGR? Redemption no. Value CRV Center, possibly. I'm oh, not okay. sure about that. Although that might be where it shows the CRV code. Oh, it's underneath also. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, the ones we're more concerned about are the larger sheets that tend to wrap the whole, you know, like a case of water bottles or oh, okay. a case of TP. Um, things like that. I usually <laughs> have a bag full of samples. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm that crazy person. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't have them with me today. We had them this morning with the driver's training um, to just make it clear to them what we're talking about. Awesome. Thank you for your presentation. Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you. Kind of made my comments already along okay, the way. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you for your presentation. And, and following up on what you were just speaking about, what Rick was speaking about um, even in my home w the plastic film gets confusing uh, just a couple of days ago my wife was unwrapping the wrap around a tray of um, drums chicken drumsticks you know what I mean how they're in a, a tray and then they're wrapped with plastic uh -huh. and she was putting that plastic wrap in the recycle bin and I had to go no 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 it goes over in the trash yeah. underneath the sink and she goes you know and <laughs> Yeah. And I go, it's, I went into my explanation, and uh, you don't want to hear that. But it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I got an up-close look at the problems that that causes, that that kind of material causes uh -huh. uh, last week, because I, was at a, I wasn't at the Marina Murph, but I was at another materials recovery facility, or Murph, right. um, up in San Carlos, and watching the sort lines there. And that's the main thing that the workers are pulling out, is that the film plastics... <coughs> um, and there's a guy, I, I, you know, in the, um, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Anyway, he's, he, he's the supervisor. He's watching on screens all the time to see what's, what's happening. And that's the main thing he's looking for is equipment jams, and they're usually caused by film plastics. So it, it really slows down the process. The whole line has to be shut off, things like that, until it's untangled. So it, it is a, a big problem. So uh, I, I'm wondering if there shouldn't be some sort of uh, it's not quite the right word, but an advertising or informational campaign done by all of us to, to remind people that plastic film goes in the trash. It, yeah. You know, and maybe even on the s side of the trucks in small letters underneath the artwork. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we did have the uh, some giant signs about that. I guess it was two years ago. So our trucks did feature 
kind of billboards about that, and then we sent postcards to everybody. But it wouldn't hurt to do another round of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to remind people. And, it, you know, they say it takes at least six times, sometimes eight times for a message to sink in. <laughs> it's just how our brains work. So, it, yeah, it wouldn't hurt at all to repeat that um, or, you know, augment that campaign. So thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Okay. Thank you. I, I also found that actually during my campaign process that actually one of the most powerful tools that we have here in Hollister, word of mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, share it with your friends. I know I've shared with my neighbors about the um, large item pickup, mm -hmm. and they've used that a couple times. Oh, good, yeah. So, you know, now we'll start talking about the film. Yep. Yeah. Yep. People trust um, people they know more than any other source of information. So, yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, did we open it to public comment? Uh, thank you for reminding us. Okay, uh, public comment on Zoom or in chambers. No public comment. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go on to annual green business program update. Okay, and on the line we have Brooke Wright. Brooke Wright, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hand it off to you. All right, thank you so much. And um, yeah, thank you for having me here today to share about our program. It's actually gonna be a little bit broader than just the green business program. So we're working on a lot of things for San Benito County, but I'm Brooke Wright, I'm with Environmental Innovations and we are the consultants for the green business program for San Benito County. And we wear a lot of hats at Environmental Innovations. So definitely, um, doing the technical assistance for businesses, partnering with Recology and your other partners in the county. Uh, but we also are basically the staff to the California Green Business Network, which the county is a member of. And we run a lot of programs through that network. We've been getting state funding that's expiring in December, but that state funding has allowed us to give the businesses that are doing the green business program an additional 500, sometimes $1,000 to help them pay for green purchasing that helps them get certified. And sometimes they'll do things like buy 100% renewable energy with the money. They can buy a company bicycle for their employees. It's pretty broad. It can be things as simple as cleaning products and LED lighting. So, so that's one of the things that we do. Another new project we have that'll help San Benito County small mom and pop shops, especially, is we have a program through PG&E called Simplified Savings. And that is um, basically an opportunity for us to serve businesses that there's a gap between what would help them save money on their utilities, save money on their lighting and electricity bills, and what they can afford. So we're able to come in through this program starting in July we'll be able to come in and actually get electricians in there, get them new lighting and have all of that covered through this PG&E grant. So that's super exciting. And um, the other project that's exciting is we had done some foodware ordinance support in the city of Seaside in Monterey County, where basically before even doing green business work with a business, we would go into a restaurant and say, hey, we noticed you're using single-use plastic for your in-house um, dining, and we have technical assistance. Uh, we can help you with find purchasing and also pay for reusables. We do this um, in the city of Seaside. It was through a city contract, but we also have a partner called Plastic Free Restaurants that'll help pay for those reusable purchases as well. So we were able to do that and um, went to the federal EPA for a pollution prevention grant, which is now going to allow us to expand that program and offer San Benito County businesses that $300 um, of purchasing for reusables as well, and a little bit more technical assistance in the field too. So those are some updates that are beyond the um, green business program. But coming back to the Green Business Program itself, I just wanted to let this task force know we have, you know, the whole program is very data driven. Every business that enrolls in our program, it's free for them. I think you all know that. 
but um, one of the things that we do is try to collect a lot of data to know what the impact is of their certification. And so then we're able to generate reports and we can do these um, very customized. So if you were curious, how much of an impact are the offices that are getting certified actually having? Um, how much environmental impact? We can run a report that just shows what the offices in San Benito County have accomplished and reflect that in numbers like you see on this slide. So I just wanted you to know about that and also see some of these numbers. The numbers on these slides, which you'll have access to, um, are for this fiscal year, starting July 1st of 2022. And in addition to those, we have, like I said, those state funds where we're able to give uh, green purchasing funds to businesses. And to date, we have $3,000 that have gone out to um, San Benito County businesses. And these are all our partners on the bottom. And this is just another example of some of the data that we can pull. For most programs, you'll see more around the fuel saved. I it was a little sad when I saw removing zero cars off the road. It's a little tricky in San Benito County. I hope those new transportation grants help move the needle on that, but um, it is hard to encourage businesses to you know, have their employees bicycle from Salinas or something like that. So anyways, um, so this is a list of the businesses and organizations that got certified or recertified over the course of the last 12 months. And um, yeah, if you, you know, just get a chance kind of like uh, you were just saying about the um, word of mouth being so powerful, I think, you know, being able to go and just thank any of these businesses, if you're ever in the area, even if you're not doing business with them, or if you're able to come to that mixer in July, um, it really means a lot. It's a huge reason that businesses are motivated to do this program and go beyond compliance for their environmental stewardship is being able to um, hear that gratitude. So just keep in mind these businesses and a lot of these also have been in the program year after year. And that's another thing that's kind of exciting about this program is seeing that, um, that continued commitment. So yeah, be sure to be sure to thank them. I just briefly wanted to show you some of what happened in Seaside because this is the kind of impact that I'm hoping we can have in San Benito County as well. Uh, this is an example, these are pictures from a seaside business that was serving um, everything on single-use plastic or single-use clamshells and switched everything to reusables. We have case studies that are printable that we can share with you from these businesses and it shows how they're saving thousands of dollars because they made this switch, which at first seemed really hard. Um, they thought they didn't have the employee staff time and it wouldn't be worth it, but through the case studies, we really go back and calculate every dollar, even in staff time that they're, that is spent to make these changes and they save a lot of money. And of course it reduces a tremendous amount of waste. And these are some of the numbers that are in those case studies that I can share with you. So yeah, just as I said at the beginning, we have a lot of different programs, a lot of different partners, not just in San Benito County, but across the state. And we're able to, like Frankie talked about the conference he went to, we have a whole network of technical experts in sustainability that we're able to leverage to find out about, you know, the best practices working with businesses across different um, aspects of sustainability. So, uh, so going into this new year, what we're looking at is really helping San Benito County bring together all of those resources, those uh, grants that, um, that were just discussed with AMBAG, and then there's grants from 3CE. There's a lot of different players, especially in the electrification of buildings and of transportation. So one of our goals this year is going to be to help, you know, create a nice resource for you that where that's all simplified. And, um, and just help the county with sustainability efforts across the board. So, so we're a resource for you. Uh, we are also planning to focus on municipal buildings. We certified the elections office and uh, as sort of a pilot, but we're looking to certify more city and county 
um, facilities in the coming years. So if you would like to nominate any specific offices for the Green Business Program this year, please um, go ahead and do it now or share them and follow up with me at another time. And that's all I got. I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Cool. Brooke? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna just add one last comment about municipal facilities walk in the talk at our July Green Business Mixer on July 19th with the Chamber of Commerce um, over at Vets Memorial Hall. That is another city facility that is working towards their certification. We have City of Hollister, Hollister Recreation, who is what our first city facility um, and, and regional agency member facility certified. We really want to have this event be a kickoff for these efforts to certify municipal uh, facilities. I wanted to let you all know that. We hope to see you there. And um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. And Brooke is on the line. Rick, do you have anything else? Um, I have nothing. I think you just you answered too many questions. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> um, thank you for your presentation, and I look forward to the city participating in municipal facilities. We wouldn't walk the talk. Fantastic. Good to hear. Great. Thank you for the information. It was very informative. <clears throat> I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thanks yes, for the time. Yes, thank you for the great presentation. Um, the only other thing I can can add is um, I, I just think um, we still have too many plastic bags floating around and if we can somehow everybody not just us but everybody can kind of concentrate on getting rid of those <laughs> We want to see that too, and I know we've worked with San Juan Batista, City of San Juan, and city staff to adopt a sustainable foodware and retail bag ordinance in 2020, and we would like to do the same efforts in Hollister and the County of San Benito, and so Monica um, in the prior years had presented this concept to the City Council. Uh, we did business surveys and um, sought input from the city of Hollister businesses, and we would like to bring that back. And I know, Rick, um, uh, Councilman Perez, you've brought that up um, and, and wanting to bring that back as well. So that is a goal for us for fiscal year 23-24. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just comment to you, and one of the many hats that Environmental Innovations has been wearing is supporting lots of different cities and counties with their foodware ordinance implementation. So if you know you choose to do that at the city level, definitely reach out to us and see if we can help out. Thank you. Okay, uh, should we move on to the next item, which is uh, the NEPA update and timeline? Oh, oh, thank you. Public comment. Do we need no public comment. We need more public out there so I can <laughs> Okay, on to number three. And that was a great goal, actually. Yes. Did I share the Our presentation next? or is it being pulled up? Sorry. Uh, yeah, Alex, um, we have Alex with R3 Consulting, our regional agency solid waste consultant for technical support um, with state compliance for various state mandates and um, program improvements. And for this item, this is a similar item, the same item we presented back in November. Uh, we had a timeline for implementation of updates to our non-exclusive franchise agreement. Um, Recology holds our exclusive franchise agreement, but services outside of that um, that are still open to these non-exclusive haulers like RJR Recycling, Green Waste, um, some services that actually also apply to Recology, they are also a non-exclusive hauler. Um, it's complex, so we're gonna have our three come bring this back today, present and um, share our updated timeline on implementation. All right. Hello everyone, uh, Alex Sawyer with R3 Consulting Group. Um, you're probably more used to seeing Rose Radford from our, our team, but um, I'm here with you today. So I'm um, just gonna be discussing the non-exclusive franchise agreement and the update on the timeline for that. Um, so very briefly, what are non-exclusive franchise agreements? Um, and we'll refer to them as uh, NEFAs in here. 
but an agreement granting a franchisee non exclusive right to con collect garbage recyclables and or construction and demolition materials within each jurisdiction. So these generally are haulers that are allowed to there's not one hauler that services the area it's, it is open to multiple ones, but they all need to be in agreement assigned to one of those agreements. Next slide please. Um, so a little overview. So the exclusive franchise agreement, um, which is uh, held between Recology and San Benito County, was awarded in uh, November of 2018. Uh, it does have a mandatory service area where everyone is required to have service. Um, it has a voluntary service area where people can have service upon request. And then it has a discretionary service area where Recology can uh, determine whether or not they would like to service that property. Uh, for the non-exclusive franchise, it, it only covers areas for the voluntary and discretionary service areas. It applies to construction and demolition debris collection, temporary uh, roll-off uh, bins and debris box service, and also regular debris box service. Next slide, please. So this is a map of the mandatory, the discretionary and voluntary service areas. So the mandatory areas are around uh, surrounding Hollister and San Juan Baptista. And then uh, the voluntary areas are immediately surrounded out on the northern part of the county, and the southern part of the county has the discretionary area. Next slide, please. So um, this is what is uh, required under the current NEFA. Um, so basically, the, any solid waste hauler that, that hauls uh, garbage recyclables, organic materials, or uh, construction demolition, demolition CND materials, in San Benito County, Hollister, and San Juan Baptista may are, are required to have one of these agreements in place. And uh, they're currently required to do monthly reporting and monthly payments. Next slide, please. So the the new changes uh, that we are, are, are basically trying to put in for the requirements for this uh, these edits is uh, to cover SB 1383 compliance. Um, uh, is to incorporate um, hauler feedback for the for people that do participate in this program and, and are the non-exclusive franchise haulers. Um, it, it will correct some improper reporting and payments, um, and it will also uh, require recycling, which is currently not required. So next slide. So the uh, so SB 1383 um, began implementation of January of last year, and so that requires collection of organic statewide. Um, San Benito County has a rural exemption that was mentioned earlier. Um, so that is because you have a population of less than 70,000 people. Um, that is set to expire on uh, December 31st, 2026. And so the uh, proposed permit language anticipates this change and has this incorporated um, so that those elements of SB 1383 that are required to be implemented after that point um, do have a start date of January 1st, 2027. Next slide, please. So, um, so this is going to change from the non-exclusive franchise agreement to a permit system, which just simplifies things overall um, for all the haulers. And so, it'll be a con con consolidate um, the administration of the requirements um, to provide organic service um, to all the customers. So, with that process, we have stated there that waivers are allowed. So, there's a um, just potential for having waivers for. Um, de minimis amount of organics generation. So if you're generating less than, um, than 10 gallons of organic waste, if you have less than two cubic yards of service per week, um, you are now required to, to have that and you can get a waiver. Um, if you have more than two cubic yards of service, um, then you're allowed uh, to generate up to 20 gallons a week without, um, and, and you can apply for a waiver with less than 20 gallons of generation. So just explain that a little bit. Um, and then they, the law also requires standardized colors and labels. Some of those labeling requirements do start early, but the standardized colors um, does need to be implemented by, by uh, 2036 is the date um, in SB 1383 that those, those uh, changes need to be made. Um, and it does require the diversion of recycling and organics, and it does have additional uh, annual reporting requirements um, that are part of uh, how recycles new electronic annual reporting program. And so you're reporting on progress of all those SB 1383 programs that are now, now going to start being required. Um, this will apply to San Benito County and includes the cities of Hollister and San Juan Bautista. 
and it does remove the requirement to submit your second plan as part of the uh, application process. Next slide, please. So um, we this has been brought to the uh, LTF before back in December. Um, so uh, following this process, we're going to work on preparing the MOU and permit documents um, with staff. Um, and then uh, basically those will be brought back to the LTF um, for recommendation at your September meeting. Um, they will host shops for feedback from those haulers. Um, the, the members, uh, member agencies will also have to adopt the mem memorandum of understanding to participate in this. Um, the county will adopt that MOU and permit as well. Um, and then uh, we'll need to inform form the haulers, develop all the necessary collateral, which is like the reporting formats, which are already in development, um, and implement a new starting date uh, for the permit of January 1st of 2020. And so these items are listed on this next slide. Um, and if, next slide, please. Um, and so basically the December 15th date was when uh, your task force saw this the first time. Um, September 21st, we'll be coming back to uh, you, you with uh, the MOU and uh, the highlighted ma majority changes that are going to occur to that. Um, and then for the LTF's feedback and recommendation, um, then uh, we'll start uh, the workshops with the haulers um, and then work on uh, the, the uh, um, approval process with the cities and the county and then uh, work on rolling this out and having it applied to the haulers and have it go in effect January 1st of 2024. Um, and next slide, please. I think that, that is it. So this, this is on to the next item. Um, I'll bring Selena, any other uh, things to add or anything? No, we welcome your feedback on this timeline. Uh, we, again, we're hoping to have this implement uh, the new hauler permit effective July 1st of this year, but we're a bit behind um, just with staffing shortages and uh, other priority projects like the January storms and March storms. Um, so we're, we're updating this timeline, but again, feedback is welcome. Um, I feel like we've done a, a good job in, in um, providing opportunity for haulers like RJR, Green Waste, um, Recology to uh, provide feedback on, on this programming um, and, and input. Uh, questions from the board, Rick. So, do I have this understanding right? So basically, these are people that are just moving all the trash in and into our county and through or through our county. These uh, are. This is for um, not out of county waste. This is for in county waste. So you, as a resident, you um, request a twenty yard debris box. You are not um, required to have recology service, no matter what jurisdiction you live in. So this is just one example. You you can choose any of our approved NEPA haulers right. to to have that. A non-approved hauler would not be able to provide the service to you in San Diego County. So this is requiring them to report, um, to recycle, um, and, and put effort towards that, uh, and then have an agreement with, with the county. Um, it would be actually a permit. Um, we're, we're moving away from the agreements and towards a permitting process. Okay, and, and with that, so thank you. The, um, because um, it seems like one of the issues we have is our roads and these trucks that are carrying stuff through from out of county, but in county, it's like, I'm just wondering as far as the permitting process and the fees that go along with that, is anything being applied to our roads? I believe the county um, had a transport agreement that is not um, being administered at this time, and we can look into that. That would be a, a county document. Um, I don't think at, at the city level, um, but we could bring that back with more more information and see what would be possible. Um, Alex, do you have any comments on or, or examples of other cities and counties who are um, using I don't know maybe a, a transportation transportation surcharge or other? I do not have uh, any any examples off the top of my head, but I can check with other R3 staff and see if it's something that we can report back to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the last thing I will say, um, again, these are for haulers where it, you, not a landscaper, where the, the, the waste is incidental to their work. So we're looking at haulers who are just hauling 
from the point of, of business. Thank you. Going back to when this goes into effect, so January 1, 2024, and the non-exclusive, um, what's the benefit of not requiring them to have a recycling plan? I mean, I see that as a um, not a positive thing. So, so why wouldn't, if we're trying to, if we, the state, Cal Recycle Program is trying to implement what goes into the landfill, why would they not require with the permit system for it to, to have a recycling plan? Yeah, and Alex can expand on this, but we're still having them meet recycling requirements, but I, I believe just through a different method. Yes, there are requirements that are placed in there um, and it is required that recycling happens. Um, I think that it was just, I think it was a form and a uh, one of those things that was seen as maybe a, 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 an additional administrative burden because there is a lot of additional reporting and uh, compliance pathways that have to happen as the, uh, the, the additional SB 1383 elements that were added to this agreement. So, so they still have to adhere to recycling but there's not just a plan and a form that they need to complete. Okay. Yes, they have to adhere to recycling even more so, basically. Okay. I think yeah. the recycling plan, because it wasn't required at the time, was a tool for staff to have those conversations with the haulers and, and have the hauler think about how they're going to recycle the material at the point of collection. Well, I like that there's just more control um, for the, the county, your department, and so forth to to um, just for enforcement wise. So going back to the permit, um, who's gonna issue the permit and what's the cost of the permit and then what's the violation or what's the fee if we find a violation of, of their um, permitted use? I don't know. There is a list of several different liquidated damages and they have different amounts um, to them for different violations um, within there. So that is something that we could provide as part of the details. I know when, when we're bringing this back to you guys in September, um, I think we're going to have the, the high level items that are the updates. So we could include a lot of those things um, in that and then also provide the document of the revised language as well. Okay. And then any fees that are collected in terms of there's a violation, does that stay within the integrated waste management budget? The plan would be to put the um, fees, uh, if it's going to be a regionally regional agency program and continue to be so, all of those permit fees would be um, put into the fund 226, which is our county regional agency fund. OK, thank you. Thank you, B. Um, the questions I have, uh, do you have any idea on the number of uh, non-franchise haulers, uh, people who are signing up or getting on your list? Is it? I believe it was nine regularly reporting NEPA haulers, but agreements we have closer to 15, 14. So, like, if I was to redo my roof and I, I have a 40-yard roll-off box, uh, um, I, I have a choice of a fairly substantial choice of, of people to rent the box from and do the transportation to the to the landfill. Exactly. And um, going back to this map, another example of service from these NEPA haulers, Recology holds the exclusive contract so that this these areas in red, that is mandatory service by Recology for curbside collection, not roll-offs, just right. curbside collection, um, any commercial collection uh, in the, the bins. The area in green, uh, residents can select any of the haulers, and Recology is required per our contract to provide that service. Uh, but in the discretionary area, the residents, um, and these are much more rural roads, uh, sometimes these trucks can't get down there, and so that is where it's really at the discretion of Recology to provide the service or not, and as well as any other hauler, um, if, if there's the means to do so for curbside collection. Thank you. I have uh, no further questions. Any public comment on Zoom or in chambers? No public comment. Thank you. Okay, go on to number four, quarterly review of the budget or agency expenditures. Okay. That's this page here. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. The 
the cost sharing agreement of our integrated waste management regional agency uh, states the local task force will also review actual expenditures at least quarterly and make recommendations to the governing bodies on any actual or anticipated over expenditures and so um, this meeting ha has not consistently met um, in the past decade and in the last couple years of meeting we have really focused on just establishing a lo local task force uh, presenting um, you know, who we are what what services we provide and so this is really the, f the first time since its reoccurrence that we are sharing with you the quarterly expenditures um, so I would really appreciate any recommendations you would have as our local task force on improvements or if more data you would like. Um, this is just a, a brief overview. Um, and then we, we did, each of you should have received a document that'll be attached to the agenda um, on fiscal year budget compar comparing the actual expenditures. And I will note that for this actual expenditures, this doesn't account for a lot of our April expenses. Um, and all of the expenses for quarter um, or for this May June uh, period as well. Um, <clears throat> the budget that was approved for expenses was a little over 1.3 million, and our actual expenditures to date um, are 621 thousand. And you can see we, we still have a lot of budget unspent, but again, there will be. Um, a considerable amount to be added with the contract expenses from this time period. Uh, another reason for um, under expenditure is for staffing reasons. We did not have one of our positions fully staffed, or sorry, staffed at all. Um, we, we hired Frankie in quarter, uh, well in April of 2023, so for that entire period prior, um, we did not have that position filled. Um, and let's see, for just general services, supplies, and other charges, that budgeted approved uh, approved was 909,000 a little over uh, salary and benefits 415,000 but actual expenses services and supplies 347,000 salary and benefits at 273,000 uh, I'm going to move on to revenues and there are certain revenues that come directly to the regional agency um, from our recology operating agreement, but then you as the county and the cities, there's specific revenue sources that go to you directly and those help pay for the cost share of these, this programming. Um, <clears throat> so overall for our budgeted revenue, $474,000. $531. Grants, um, that was $247,521. We have several grants, uh, SB 1383 local assistance grant through Cal Recycle, a city county payment program grant that helps us with um, purchase of recycling containers, some litter abatement efforts, and um, uh, school assemblies, um, membership for uh, additional media um, on recycling bottles and, and other topics related to recycling. Then we have our oil payment program grant, and these are all through Cal Recycle again. That is a reoccurring grant where it helps fund our oil, motor oil collection programming efforts, outreach. We have a contract we've done every year for the past two years with a, a group called Writers Recycle, and they go out in the community to table to table at events um, or in front of an auto shop, any of our oil collection centers, and, and provide that outreach giving free supplies. And it, it as well funds those free supplies and tools to uh, DIY residents who do their own motor oil changes. And then we were awarded a hazardous waste grant, uh, HD 37 through Cal Recycle competitive grant that um, that is helping us pay for those LED lights to distribute new recycling day events that we're hosting up to twice a year and a lot of additional bilingual outreach collateral on hazardous waste programming. Um, very exciting. I, I hope that we can present some of the, the progress on that grant um, at a future LTF meeting. And then the recology revenue that comes directly to the regional agency is 227000 uh, Actual revenues to date, um, slightly lower, 350,000. Grants, um, much lower than, than what our anticipated uh, grants were, um, only because these are, are reimbursement grants, and so, and, and the grants go over several years, so we didn't, um, we have more time to spend the money, 
um, in those that might fall into next fiscal year. So that, that is the reasoning behind there. Uh, but we did receive our annual CCPP grant, our um, annual OPP grant, all of that funding came in. Um, and the grant overall revenue received to date is 96,000. Glucology revenue is actually greater than anticipated at 250,000. Um, <coughs> this is, oh, I apologize, there's a mistake on this slide that we will correct. The, oh no. So it's Recology Revenal Re Regional Agency, I apologize again. Uh, this is inclusive of the hazardous waste recycle uh, so hazardous waste payments. We get a quarterly payment to pay for all of our hazardous waste programming, the monthly events at John Smith Road Landfill that we have that residents can drop off their free hazardous waste, uh, any purchase of sharps containers, we've done that in prior years, um, and other uh, hazardous waste programming as, as it um, arises. And so that is fully funded through that funds. Uh, then the other recology revenue that comes directly to the regional agency is recycle day revenue. And this is what is paying for those quarterly recycle day events um, at John Smith Road Landfill to accept two bulky items per resident. And what we've seen is the cost of the event is actually much less than the revenue coming in. So we might even look at increasing these events um, per year or offering maybe an alternative option more in town, kind of like what we're doing with the Recycle Day events over at Bergantino Park and Vets Park, uh, something in town to make it that much more easy for the residents to dispose of their bulky items. Uh, so we'll be looking at options um, for that and bringing those back to our LTF for, for feedback. Uh, SB, two new revenue sources, thanks to Monica. Um, SB 212 reimbursement, so we've gotten, um, so far, this, these payments for reimbursement of our Sharps and medication program, or sorry, just Sharps um, programming began in November, um, and we've already received 4,100 uh, to date, and those reimbursements will be continuous um, and fully fund all the disposal and transportation costs for Sharps, so that's no longer coming out of our pocket. Uh, the Mattress Recycling Council, MRC, uh, illegal, illegally dumping mattress collection initiative reimbursement. Uh, this is another um, great, it's not a lot, $300, but it's coming in. <laughs> Money's money, we'll take it. Um, this is for every illegally dumped mattress that's on the side of the road. Um, we're a rural county, we get $20 per mattress that's taken to the landfill. Um, if it's picked up by our public work staff uh, at the city, at the county, if it's picked up by Recology. So Monica is working with those various entities at the, and, and the landfill to track that. Um, and just w we started this programming in October, was it? Yeah, in the fall. And so to date, $300, um, $20, $20 per, per mattress. So every, every penny counts. <laughs> and, and that's the quick overview. Uh, again, really would appreciate any feedback that we can incorporate for our next quarterly meeting as far as preference in, in um, reporting the expenditures. I have a question on your, um, your reporting. I know in January when we had the floods on Lover's Lane and we provided the boxes, you know, the, the, um, the big bins out there. I know Recology record, um, reported that they had had the six boxes out there at Lover's Lane and then she said three more for the river cleanup. Um, did that impact your budget at all? No, actually, well, not our regional agency budget. So the, the free, we get so many free dumpsters for the county uh, per this exclusive agreement, so many for the city of Hollister, so many for the city of San Juan Batista. I think it's five um, solid waste dumpsters and five recycling dumpsters for San Juan and 10 um, solid waste dumpsters, 10 recycling dumpsters for the county. So we um, use those. <laughs> What, what's that face for? You get, you get 10, or t yeah, 10, 10, <laughs> 10, five, 10. Um, and, and so, <laughs> so those are um, options to collect various material cleanup efforts. Um, however, the, what was used towards the storm debris cleanup off of um, the dumpsters off of Lover's Lane, uh, they were actually outside of that. We submitted a request to Recology through their donation portal to give us an additional um, up to 10, and we did, they accepted that request, and so those were used and did not impact our, our other 10. Because I know there was some um, concern, so I'm glad it didn't, um, and then I see your budget's in the black anyway, so. Yeah. 
we have some flexibility. Okay. Um, in terms of improvement, um, this meeting itself is highly informative. It impacts every city and county and resident in the community. And my thought is, since there's not any feedback in terms of public comment involvement, it might be the timing in terms of the time that we're holding the meeting. Now, I don't know if you all want to have an evening meeting for this, um, but that might be if you want to attract more um, feedback, that, that might be a suggestion mm -hmm. um, for you. But, but prior to me coming on uh, the, the task force, I didn't have all of this information. I had it in bits and pieces, but I couldn't even see the puzzle because I didn't know what I knew already. Now I feel like I'm highly informed um, and I can go out and again, you know, promote um, the integrated waste management and all the programs you're doing. But I didn't know until I was on this task force. And it would be beneficial to the community to have that same knowledge just by being able to participate and hear the conversations. You guys are doing a lot, you know, and I'm a firm believer that you gotta pat yourself on the back every now and then when you do a great job. And all of you are doing a great job, but the community doesn't know it. They don't know the full um, programs that are out there and available to them. Like once Frankie um, starts becoming up on his phone numbers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna promote that like crazy, you know, because that's a pet peeve that the supervisors have about the trash on the road. You know, and then other people are going to be hearing and knowing of it. And pretty soon we're going to have, what was it? Keep San Benito clean, keep San Benito beautiful. What's the name of the program? Hold on, Frankie. I think I already got it for you. <laughs> uh, you said something about Alameda County. Oh, beautify San Benito County or keep San Benito beautiful. Something like that. And I'm kind of helping you work on your, <laughs> your little um, motto there. But um, you guys just do so much. And um, just if the community can find out and know more about it, you're gonna be busier, but it, it'll be a positive impact on the community. So just the timing of the meetings. Yeah, and that would be at the discretion of the local task force. The dates and the times were set at the first meeting of the year. And so if the, the um, if it's the desire of the task force to move the meeting to a later date, I think we did see a higher turnout in public comment at our last special meeting, which was at six o'clock. So um, that would be at your discretion. <laughs> I can share in your discretion. <laughs> hate to impose extra work on the staff. I, I would hate to do that. But if we really want the community to really benefit from your message, and it's a beautiful message, it's a wonderful message, um, we just have to get more people to, to be involved. And so. As far as I'm concerned, if whatever is going to work to get this out to whatever time for I'm willing to attend that meeting at that time whatever you guys feel is good I I do the budget it's like um, I'm still getting a grasp on all my budget stuff too so it's like um, I'm looking for the experience of our elders <laughs> um, Thank you, and um, I, I really appreciate you guys running a lean, mean, but effective organization. You're in the green or in the, you know what I mean, you're in the plus side, you're not uh, over budget, you're not having to <coughs> jump through hoops to do all these things, you're, you're, you're really getting it done effectively. As to the previous, I, I just want you to know, Rick, that we, u we use our five roll-off bins for things like the rib cook-off and the parades and stuff like that. We, that's no, um, th those are inclusive out outside of those. So you get oh, an additional, yeah. I think uh, the San Juan Batista has only used one to date so far, and it was for storm-related material um, at the one of the parks. The, the RV, no, not at the RV park. Um, at the for, for folks just living in San Juan could go dump um, mm. their storm debris, garbage. Um, it was at a local park. That would have been Veruti Park, and, but the park wasn't affect, wasn't afflicted by the floods. It was just a place to dump. Um, the, the Mission RV Park was severely affected by the flooding. Um, the other problem that we're kind of discussing is uh, public participation. 
And like I said, yeah, now this is a plan by a really bureaucratic organization, but it's thick. And they don't have any people there either, <laughs> you know? Um, so uh, uh, evening meetings obviously are, are, are more important. I do know that other jurisdictions like Monterey and, and s sometimes even Santa Cruz, uh, uh, their version of Integrated Waste Management Commission actually gets occasionally contentious even. And, and, and you know, pe there's people lined up that speak on different issues. Uh, you're not doing enough, you're not doing enough. And here we're, uh, we're, we're reaching and stretching, which I appreciate, you know, like B said, you guys are proactive and, and, and that, and that, that, in my opinion, that's fantastic. So thank you. Thank you for the presentation and, and everything. Yes. The, um, that's because of our fearless leader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our extraordinary staff. <laughs> Um, I would ditto the extraordinary <laughs> staff. I don't know about the fearless leader comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, leader. Uh, okay, we're fearless. <laughs> um, so, like, I was thinking, like, the um, Santa Clara, or they have the once a year putting in your street pickup type of thing. How does that work out there? And does anything like that, is it? Have we ever thought about bringing like a program like that over here? Can you explain the program Basically a little bit more? Basically they get their stuff. Anything you don't want, you put it in a, their street and they mm -hmm. come by and pick it up. And, and then it's also a day where the whole community goes out and kind of shops. shops. Oh. So it's a, it's a kind of free for all and then whatever's left at the end of the day is then refuse. Okay. It yeah. comes in with the Scoop, 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 and they scoop it up, and then they throw but it. But sometimes it's furniture, you know, anything. chairs, beds. I mean, anything that they. But so we could get pretty messy in terms of what's being collected. But a lot of the good stuff is is. Still there. I've participated in Santa Clara. Right See, she's all excited. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could definitely try an event like that out and see what. Um, I, uh, with the excess funds of the that um, but but not garbage, recycle day. you know, good stuff. Yeah, you know, good, yeah. That um, would go, that would go to like the goodwill, or someone might throw away at the dump, or end up at the second chance mercantile. You know, where they just don't have a need for it any longer, and then the rest of it they're all shopping. Do you have an <laughs> idea on best time of year to do something like that? Spring cleaning. They do when they do the spring, spring cleaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we I will guess. take note of that, and, and we can do. Um, I know S San Juan Batista did their own type of community yard sale, right? Yeah, but it's it's n it's not quite. I, I used to live in Fresno County a long time ago, uh, and they did a very similar thing uh, um, that Rick was just describing. And this was, like I said, it was a long time ago. Definitely, w you know, twenty. It was thirty years ago before 1383 was even thought of and but there was or you know there's tree people mm -hmm. would cut up trees and branches you, what you and I would call organics you know yeah. so so, so th that would be a pr I would see that would be as a bit of a problem you would ha have to separate that out now as, as you all know better than I do but um, it it was a good thing I mean I don't don't let me discourage you but by telling you the problems. So much for the fearless leader. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, but no, no, I'm I, just I warning you of the problems. You know, but in 1383, you're going to have to divert those organics. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and with, with that, so that's, that's kind of brings everything together because it's all going to, we're going to be promoting. We're going to be, we're going to have to have them do some type of separation at the collection point, right? Mm. So you can't just mix your trees with your Furniture. Uh, furniture, yeah. So, but it's something maybe to look out for the future, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the, with the staff we got, and I think we can find solutions here. Yeah, we can discuss more with um, Recology to see how we would manage and staff the whole collection, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can give an update at the next LTF meeting on um, progress for. Because e even instead of like rolling it out citywide, we can say like start in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. see, you know, experiment, see how we can separate and stuff. We should put Frankie on this. Oh. <laughs> 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 Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Anyways, thank you. Th I, th that's why we love these meetings. You know, and, and this is, you know, if we can find out a better time to maybe have it, because this is government working at its best, combined, you know, um, with our agencies. And it's good things are getting done. Thank you. Any public comment, uh, or did I already say that? So no, you didn't. Thank okay, you. well, Zoom or Chambers. <laughs> no public comment. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll find out some details from Santa Clara County when they have it and so forth, the name of it, so that it'll be easier for you guys to, to do some research. Yeah. Okay, motion to adjourn. So move to, oops. Oops, oh, are, are, I, I'll I'm, take, I'm sorry. I'll did withdraw my motion. <laughs> did, <laughs> did we want to take any action on uh, scheduling the meetings at six or? Well, um, I want you to discuss it with your staff and then figure out something that works. I'm gonna ask that you stay away from Thursdays because we have COG and LAFCO on Thursdays, they alternate and so um, I don't have them on the same night of course, but and then I don't know when AMBAG happens. It's, we it's Wednesday, so. Because you two are in It's only once a week. It's only once, mean, a once a month. month. Once a month. Yeah. Um, um, I, I was going to say we we can't take actions, uh, Selena. I know it's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. It's a, that would be an action item. It's not on the agenda. We kind of got to push it off to next time. Okay. Can <laughs> do. So, but we can make an agenda item for next time to continue the discussion. And in the meantime, Selena can discuss with her staff and come up with some uh, exactly. proposed options. Okay. Now, do you want a motion, motion yeah. to adjourn? Yes, so please. moved. Thank you. Rick? <laughs> I'll second, second. my own motion <laughs> <laughs> so we can go. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Have a great one, everyone. Yeah. You guys are still <laughs>